Welcome to Boston, Massachusetts. Today is March 14th, 2024. It is Pi Day. It is 9.50 a.m. and about... I think it's a little warmer than what my phone's saying here, so I'm going to refresh it. That's about 45 degrees out. Feels much warmer than that, though. Today I'm going to walk on the Irish Heritage Trail. First up is the Rose Kennedy Garden in Greenway. As you can see, I'm here in uh, Christopher Columbus Park or Waterfront Park. Rose Kennedy was born in Boston's North End. And I'm actually coming upon the garden now. Yeah, it's a little, you can see it's a little drab now because it's early in the season. Um, but this is beautiful, beautiful with flowers during other parts of the year. If I, I'm going to look, I think I have photos of it. I'm going to look for that. And this fountain is usually running. Uh, so Rose Kennedy, her parents were John Honey Fitz Fitzgerald, who later became the mayor of Boston, and Mary Josephine Hannon. Rose married Joseph P. Kennedy, and they raised nine children, including President John F. Kennedy. In 1987, the city officials unveiled the Rose Kennedy Garden to honor Rose for her contributions to this country and to the inspiration she has given us to us all. Actually, I'm going to turn around this way. Rose died in 1995 at age 105 in 2004. Boston's Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Greenway was officially dedicated in her honor, which we're going to cross in a second. Uh, Faneuil Hall is right across the street, which we will walk through to get to the next uh, points of interest on the uh, Irish Heritage Trail. Oh, it's a beautiful view of uh, some of the buildings here from this park. Shall walk right here so we can look at Boston's historic North End sign. Okay, so we're going to cross over the Rose Kennedy Greenway right here. As you can see, it's this path through the city, through Boston. It goes from around the north end to uh, Chinatown. Uh, the Rose Kennedy Greenway is a beautiful 1.5 mile walkway of parks. It's the result of the big dig that put a large stretch of Interstate 93 underground. That was, that was a mammoth, mammoth project. I remember when the highway used to be above ground here. It was quite an eyesore. And a lot of noise here, of course. All right, so we're gonna go through Faneuil Hall to get to the next point of interest. I think this is Surface Street we're crossing right here. As you can see, it's fairly early, early in the morning on a weekday morning, so uh, you know, a lot of the trucks are resupplying all the restaurants and bars and uh, shops. I'm going to walk around this end as we're on the back side of uh, Quincy Market. This building in front of us is the North Market. And it is a beautiful March day. I am looking forward to uh, some of the greenery coming back here. That usually starts happening around mid-April, early May. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing what Faneuil Hall looks like hopping, I have plenty of uh, other videos on my channel. 
where I've come through at peak times. This clock looks like it stopped. It's actually now around 10 a.m. the Faneuil Hall Meeting House building. All right, so I believe the next point of interest is gonna be right around the corner of this uh, Sephora here, which is going to be the Kevin White statue, which is a 10-foot bronze statue of Kevin White by Pablo Eduardo. The sculpture was installed in 2006. So Kevin White was Boston's 45th mayor and served for four terms between 1968 and 1984. White was instrumental in the renewal of the waterfront downtown and financial districts. Uh, which included the reopening of Quincy Market, which we, which we just walked by. He also worked on the issues of school desegregation. And here it is. Kevin White statue. Oh, here we go, yeah. Kevin Hagen White, Mayor of Boston from 1968 to 1984. It is quite a stately statue. All right, so for our next point of interest, we're going to cross the street. All right, so we're coming up to the statues of James Michael Curley. Two statues of James Michael Curley are installed here at the intersection of Congress and North Streets. The bronze double portrait was created by Lloyd Lilly during 1979 to 1980. Here it is. Um, and dedicated on September 18th, 1980. Here's the first statue. Here's the one where he's sitting. James Michael Curley served four terms of mayor of Boston between 1914 and 1955. Um, he was elected in 1914, 1922, 1930, and 1946. The terms were quite spread out over the years. He also served a single term as governor of Massachusetts from 1935 to 1937. Considered one of the more colorful politicians in Boston history. That leads us directly to the next point of interest, which is right in front of us, which is the Boston City Hall. Boston City Hall opened in 1968, and it is an example of brutalist architecture. Take a look up at it. Uh, which is characterized by minimalist construction that showcases the bare building materials. It, of course, includes the offices of the Mayor of Boston and the Boston City Council. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the stairs and we can see it from the back side or front side, whichever side you want to call them, but uh, we can see it from the other side. And then we can continue on down Washington Street to the Boston Irish Famine Memorial. Uh, you can see some of these winter active displays are still up. This is the guitar. If you're interested in that, I did a full tour of the Winter Active Art Displays uh, like two months ago. That's on my channel if you just search for Winter Active. Ah oh, yeah, so we're going around. There's a view 
so I can get the exposure right there. Anyway, that was a view back to Faneuil Hall. As we walk around Boston City Hall here, view of the city from here too. Some of these buildings here. There you go. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to continue on as we go past the government center tea station. But that is not on the Irish Heritage Trail list. So what I think I'm going to do today is go towards um, I'm going to end in the Boston Common, so there's still quite a few more uh, spots to see and hear about. Central Plaza across the street. Of course, there's the steaming tea kettle, which is actually steaming today in the Sears Crescent building. Other than those aren't covered today. All right, so we're gonna take a detour down to Washington Street so we can do the Irish Famine Memorial. As you can see, we're facing the old uh, town hall, or old state house, sorry, the old state house. Doing a lot of construction in the city currently. views here too. That's one thing I like about Boston. You get you do get great views of the city from a lot of different spots. <laughs> shadows now on Washington Street with all these tall buildings. It's Pie Alley. <laughs> oh, it looks like some things are closed down there. Here too, look at that. I don't know, I hate seeing paper in windows like that. Hopefully some new stuff will come up pretty uh, quickly. But yeah, it's sad to see businesses go under. Yeah, another one, look at that. This was, oh, this is Birdie's Hot Chicken. Maybe it's gonna open soon. I think that's gonna, I think that Birdie's Hot Chicken's something new, not uh, something that closed. All right, so we're coming up on the Irish Famine Memorial.
Okay, so the park contains two groups of statues to contrast an Irish family suffering during the Great Famine of 1845 to 1852 with a prosperous, prosperous family that had immigrated to America. And I'm going to guess that this is the suffering family here. You can see. So yeah, this is the suffering family. And you can see the emblem for the Boston Irish Famine Memorial. And this looks like the prosperous family that moved to America. All right, so that's the Irish uh, Famine Memorial statues. And I'm going to head up to the old granary burying grounds right up School Street. which is great because we're going to go past the Omni Parker Hotel, which is the uh, inventor of the Boston cream pie. And today is pie day. It's uh, 3-14, 2024. It's an excuse to go get a pie. And of course, across the street is the site of the first public school in the United States and Old City Hall. We are heading to the Granary Burying Grounds, which is up on Tremont Street. Well, that's a, it's interesting that they program those sounds now into the uh, cars when they're in EV mode. Almost sounds like a UFO. So this is the Omni Parker House, which is the inventor of the Boston Cream Pie. You know, I was actually considering grabbing one today. I think you can still get one here. All right, so we're coming up on Tremont Street and I'm gonna wait for the light and I'm gonna cross the street. Tremont Street Baptist Church, Vermont Temple. All right, so we're coming up on the old Granary Burying Grounds, which is this, starting with this fence here, as you can see. Uh, it was established in 1660. Some of America's most notable citizens rest here, such as Paul Revere, Samuel Adams, and John Hancock. It was named for the 12,000 bushel grain storage building that was once next door, if you were wondering. And here, also uh, John Phillips, first mayor of Boston is in there. We're going to continue to the Colonel Shaw Memorial, which is going to be up Park Street. And you can see here's the Park Street Church. See, they have these tours running all day. Take a look up at the uh, Park Street Church as we walk by. Beautiful old building. And as you come around the corner, you can catch the Hancock and the Prudential through the Boston Common. So what we're going to do is walk around the outer edge of the Common, then back through for some of the uh, spots in there that are on the, the tour. You know what, I'm going to walk through the common because that's, that's not much of a sidewalk there. This is probably better too, anyway. As we walk towards the Massachusetts State House up on the hill there. Yeah, we're basically going to walk 
to the back and I'm just going in order that they have these sites listed on their website. That is the Irish Trail, Heritage Trail website. Here comes a truck to my right. Take a look back at the Boston Common. Looks like there's a tour group up here. I may have to wait for a sec before uh, looking at the Colonel Shaw Memorial. All right, the Colonel Shaw. Memorial. The Colonel Shaw Memorial depicts uh, Colonel Robert Gould Shaw leading members of the 54th Regiment, Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. This is it here, I'll get close so it gets the right exposure. Okay, as I'm, so it, uh, So leading members of the 54th Regiment, Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry, as it marched down Beacon Street on March 28, 1863, to depart the city to fight in the South. It was one of the first, or at least one of the first African-American regiments of the American Civil War. Here we go. It's all the information about the sculptor. So we're coming up on the Massachusetts State House, which was designed by architect Charles Bullfinch. Uh, it was built in January 1798. It is the state capital and seat of the government for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's a designated National Historic Landmark. For, uh, it's a designated National Historic Landmark uh, for its historical, its architectural significance. Before 1798, the Massachusetts government house was the old state house on Washington Street, which we walked by just earlier today. There we go, we'll go to the front gate. All right, so basically just gonna backtrack into the Boston Common for the soldier, Soldiers and Sailors Memorial. Uh, All right, so we're gonna walk past that, uh, past the uh, Colonel Shaw Memorial again. We got one that look before we head in, back down into the Boston Common. See all the trolleys are out. The city's coming back to life. It's really nice to see. I'm just I'm not one of these people who don't like tourists and people coming in. I love it. I like the feeling of life in the city. All right, so we're going to head to the heart of the Boston Common. Look back up onto Beacon Street. We're going to walk past the uh, Frog Pond. We're gonna hang it right here. It's 
So we're going to be coming up on the Frog Pond and then the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial. And then we, we have a few more after that. There's a couple around the common here that are cited as uh, part of the Irish Heritage Trail. down here. As you can see they have not filled the pool yet. It's still possible to get temperatures below freezing so that's why I'm, that's what I'm guessing why. Although I have to say this winter has been very mild like a lot of previous winters recently and uh, barely any snow. I believe we set a record in Boston for days without a snowfall above four inches. It's been over two years. I believe it was February of 2022 was the last time we had a snowstorm above uh, four inches in Boston. Anyway, we're heading up to the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial. It was designed by sculptor Martin Milmore. This is a Civil War memorial dedicated on September 17th, 1877. I guess this is called the Victory Column. The hill called Flagstaff Hill is a very popular sledding spot in the winter. Like I said, when we have snow. But it is true, if you come down here during a snowstorm, there'll be tons of people sledding on the backside of this hill. It's a beautiful old memorial here. Here you go, the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial. You get some close up to see a more detail of it. Very pretty. A lot of detail here on these uh, sculptures. And there we go, I believe we're where we started. All right, so I'm going to cut down the grass here. Oh, look at the squirrely over here. Oh, it's very cute. We're heading to the John Berry the Memorial. All right, we're headed towards the Commodore John Berry Memorial. I'm not going to lie, I'm using my GPS to find it because I don't know exactly where it is, but it looks like it's down close to the Embrace. I'm just going in a, it looks like to be about a straight line. And I'm not claiming that I took the most optimized route to get through all these, but it's still a fun walk through the city.
like I said, I'm basically just following the uh, order in which they are listed. I think this will be the quickest way to cut down to the right. Now there's the embrace over there. I believe this is the Boston Common Visitor Center right here. And we're going getting back over to Tremont Street. Okay, so yes, this is the Visitor Center. So what we're going to do is, so we're going to head over to the Commodore John Barry Memorial. These are the Parkman Plaza statues. Okay, so the Commodore John Barry Memorial is a tablet with a portrait, bust, and relief of Naval Officer John Barry by John Francis uh, Paramino, installed in Boston Common. Here it is. This is another spot on the Irish Heritage Trail. Um, he joined the American forces at the outbreak of war and was the first Catholic appointed to command a vessel by the Continental Congress. Barry's ship, Lexington, was the first to capture a British vessel under the American flag. So that is his claim to fame. And we're going to continue over to the Boston Massacre Memorial, which is in this direction. What I'm going to do is cut down to the right. And uh, we can get a view of the embrace as we walk by. And there we go, the embrace is right there. I have a full um, historical, or not historical, or informational uh, blurb about it in my uh, Boston Common video. Pretty soon, uh, you're going to see some gorgeous spring bloom. It'll probably be in about another month or so that it starts. All right, so we're coming up on the Boston Massacre Memorial. We're going to hang a left here and then swing around the front of it. The monument was dedicated on November 14th, 1889. The designer of the base was Boston architect Carmel Femmer. I hope I'm saying that right. It's Femer, Femer, F-E-H-M-E-R. There you can see the erected in 1888 by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in honor of those who fell at the Boston Massacre. 
On the base beneath the female figure is a bronze relief plaque depicting the Boston Massacre. There it is. This shows five men. Crispus at Atux, Samuel Maverick, James Caldwell, Samuel Gray, and Patrick Carr slain by the British soldiers in front of the Massachusetts State House. These deaths took place on March 5th, 1770. And you can look up and all their, their names are up there. You can see. Okay, so there is one more uh, point of interest for the Irish Heritage Trail on the Boston Common, and that is the Central Burying Ground. And I'll head over there. I don't believe there is an entrance actually in the Boston Common. I think it's out on the street. Of course, there is the Parkman Bandstand. I can see the uh, cemetery plot from here. Good day for tennis right now. Perfect weather actually. I don't mind to go shoot some hoops or something today. It would actually be around 50 degrees out and not much wind. It's pretty much the perfect weather to uh, play outdoor sports, in my opinion. Okay, so we're coming up on the central burying ground, which I'll cut up here, dating from 1756. Central was established to alleviate overcrowding at King's Chapel, Copps Hill, and Granary Burying Grounds, which we saw today. Uh, British common soldiers who died in combat or of disease during the Revolution are here. Foreigners who died while in Boston. American patriots from the Battle of Bunker Hill and the Boston Tea Party are here, um, and to some degree. Painter Gilbert Stewart and uh, composer William Billings. All right, so that is all the sites up until the Boston Common for the uh, Irish Heritage Trail. Here you go, here's a plaque on this side. Um, what I'm gonna do is end it here, but I'm planning to do the other parts, which are pretty much the Boston Public Garden. To uh, Fenway Park. Anyway, for completion's sake, what I want to do is come around the corner here and actually enter the cemetery if I can. I'm assuming it's open. As we're over here on Boylston Street. Oh, yep, the gate is open. Yes, here's a Will William Billings plaque. He's buried here. There you go. And we'll just walk in. I also did the same thing in my uh, Boston Common video, but I'll go in today. And 
And all right, we are on the other side now. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you like my content in general and you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, check out my photography at wayneoxfordphotography.com. Um, if you'd like to su help support me and you find uh, an image you like, you can have it as a print, a cup, a, I don't know, a pillowcase, or a pillow, not a pillowcase, a pillow, uh, whatever, you know, a shower curtain, all that stuff. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for coming along.